Good afternoon. Welcome to the weekly livestock market update. I'm Brownfield anchor reporter Megan Grebner. With us is University of Missouri Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. Uh, a big week of reports as we'll talk about livestock slaughter, cold storage numbers, and cattle on feed that came out today. Um, but before we get into those, let's recap what happened this week in the markets. Yeah, so unfortunately, we don't have a lot of positive news to share this week, I guess, when we look at uh, market price movements, uh, live fed cattle uh, down nearly $3 this week. Uh, feeder cattle were steady to five lower this week. On the future side, that August uh, live cattle futures contract closed down $1.70, while the August uh, feeder cattle contract closed down $1.50. Uh, if we move to the, the beef side of the equation, the choice box beef price was down a little more than a dollar this week. We really had weakness across the board and all the components uh, in that choice box beef price. On the pork side, uh, barrel and gilt price, cash barrel and gilt prices were actually 50 cents higher this week. Uh, yet the July lean hog futures contract tumbled about $4.50 on the week. Uh, the pork cutout value was also $4 lower this week. Uh, we saw weakness in bellies, hams, uh, and loins really lead the way there. So all, all in all, a tough week. Uh, on that pork cutout value, we're actually now back below year ago levels, uh, setting about $5.60 below where we were a year ago at this time. Scott, as we take a look at that box beef price, are we, since we're getting into the peak really of uh, summer grilling season, can we maybe anticipate some uh, weakness in, in the beef side of things and really the pork side of things as we uh, work our way out of grilling season? I think that's probably the case. I guess, you know, one of the things I think at play, it's, it's certainly been a wet uh, period of time. So maybe we get a little less drag than we would normally as a result of uh, a little less grilling going on. But by and large, we've gotten beyond the peak start of that grilling season and we, we'd expect some slide downward, I, I think, as we go. Let's talk livestock slaughters as we as we get into those number. Uh, another big month for beef and pork production. We continue to talk about uh, expansion on those domestic meat supplies. Uh, beef production for May of this year was nine tenths of a percent higher than where we were a year ago at this time. Uh, thank goodness uh, cattle slaughter weights were basically unchanged relative to a year ago, uh, helping offset what was a 1.1 percent growth in cattle slaughter for May. If we look year to date, uh, we're up one percent uh, in beef production, and and that has a lot to do with the fact that we were down eight tenths of a percent year to date on uh, slaughter weights. So although cattle slaughter was up a little more than 2% uh, production being up only one as a result of those lower weights. On the pork side, we continue to see growth in pork production. Uh, for May, we were up 2% relative to a year ago as we got both growth in uh, hog slaughter numbers as well as uh, weights on the hog side. Year to date, up 3.3% in terms of pork production uh, with hog slaughter being up 3% uh, and uh, a three tenths of percent growth in weights making up the rest of that. When we get into those um, numbers specifically on the beef side of things, are we seeing maybe some signals that our rate of growth or expansion to the herd are starting to slow? Yeah, I think we're seeing a few things. Uh, uh, if, if you look at uh, heifer slaughter for May of this year, it was up 5.8%. Uh, year to date, that heifer slaughter number is up eight and a half percent, suggesting to me there's not much of an appetite to bring some of those heifers and put them back in the herd right now. I think weather is going to play a, a, a role there as, as hay prices remain high. We'll see what happens to pastures as we go through the year. Uh, on the beef cow slaughter side, we are up 2.7% uh, year to date on beef cow slaughter. It's quite a, a varied uh, uh change in beef cow slaughter as we move around the country, uh, kind of northern plains and west, so uh, re regions uh, 8 and 10, if you look at federal uh, slaughter regions, uh, up substantially in terms of beef cow slaughter. If you kind of look Missouri and south and a little west, we're actually down, so region 6 and 7. Uh, so we're getting a little bit of mixed bag in terms of, of what we see on the beef cow slaughter, but in total, slaughter being up, uh, more heifer slaughter occurring to me suggest maybe we get to January 1 of 2020 and we might be down in terms of beef cow numbers. All right, Scott, uh, let's talk a little cold storage numbers as we take a look at those. 
it looks like demand uh, looks pretty good on the beef side of things, at least. Yeah, so, I, you know, if you look at the May numbers, we're down 13, a little more than 13 percent relative to a year ago in terms of beef and cold storage. Uh, to me, um, that, that has to spell some fairly good movement of beef in domestic markets. We know we've been down on uh, exports uh, so far year to date on the beef side. Um, maybe part of that's with the lower weights that we have seen on, on the beef side of affecting uh, the, the amount of cold storage. I guess as we turn to the, the pork side of the equation, we're up eight tenths of, per, of a percent in terms of uh, total pork and cold storage. Uh, you start looking at the components there and uh, loins certainly stick out being up 25% relative to a year ago. Uh, hams and bellies have also increased. Uh, hams up nearly 8%. Uh, j just reminds me that when we're up uh, over 3% in production year to date, uh, we're getting some growth in cold storage and we'll see what that does for these markets uh, later in the year. Final report of the week, Scott, was cattle on feed. Um and really nothing too, nothing too exciting to come out of that report today. Yeah, so we came out pretty close to pre-report estimates. Uh, if, you, if you look at placed in May, uh, USDA said it came in at 97.2% uh, of a year ago, so down a little bit. Uh, just to remind everyone, May of 18 was a big placement month uh, last year uh, as, as a result of weather. Uh, overall on feed as of June 1 came in at 101.6%. Uh, that 11.74 million head count that we got uh, of on feed June 1 uh, is a record since the series began in 1996. If you recall, the previous record was just a year ago at this time. So uh, we, we are talking about increases in uh, what we have uh, in terms of cattle on feed uh, in the country. I think I want to touch on two quick things before we go. Uh, primarily related to the trade situation. We saw Mexico become the first country to ratify USMCA this week. Does that put a little added pressure on the U.S. and Canada to get it together and um, get on board with that? And, and how important is that to us moving some pork back into Mexico at a higher rate than we are? Yeah, so I think it is important. It's good to see the start of that. I think we have a ways to go in this country. Uh, before we get USMCA to, to the finish line. But, but hopefully as we go through the year, we will. Uh, I, I remind us just getting rid of tariffs on things like hams ought to be helpful. Uh, for me, the USMCA agreement is kind of that longer term win we need. Uh, we, we might not get a lot of immediate uh, additional boost out of that uh, relative to just getting rid of the tariffs that were in place. Uh, but to talk about trade with Mexico being more consistent as we move forward, I think is certainly a win, especially on the pork side. I think, and finally, to talk a little China, I had read some reports this week. They're starting to see live hog prices go up, uh, it seems like, in China, but their supply is still there. So there's a little uh, discordance between those numbers. Does that still give our markets hope that eventually – uh, maybe some deferred months that we can get some more pork, whether either going into China or uh, get access to more more of our pork onto the global market. I sure hope so for pork producers uh, in, in this country. When you see the the ending stock numbers, which I don't want to get too negative about those, but just we're going to increase supplies. Uh, we need somewhere to go with that product. Let's hope that we have an opportunity to move more of that product on on global markets. I do think we kind of have seen in China this, let's take a, a breath for a minute as they deal with accumulated stocks as, as that outbreak uh, made them slaughter maybe at a little heavier rate than otherwise would be the case. They get beyond that and start talking about tighter stocks, you know, what's that really do for uh, prices within China and what's the opportunities for places like the EU and the US to get into those markets. One doesn't want to discount the possibility of still a pretty on fire market uh, you know, later in the year, if we continue to see AS, uh, ASF have larger cuts in terms of Chinese production. Having said that, I just keep reminding us that I've learned that, you know, the Chinese in, in some ways will just reduce consumption. Um, and those are the trade-offs that we just really don't know where they ultimately come out. But it seems to me there's some reason to be optimistic later in the year. All right, next week's reports, speaking of hogs and pigs. Yeah, so we'll get another count of uh, inventories here next Thursday. 
And we finished the week uh, with uh, USDA's acreage report as well as a restaurant performance index. All right, Scott, we look forward to talking to you next Friday. Anything else? I think that's it for the week. All right, to have our weekly livestock market update delivered to your email box every Saturday morning, visit our website, brownfieldagnews.com. You can click subscribe. You can also submit questions and comments there as well. And for market updates twice daily, make sure to check out John Perkins' Market Minute. Have a great weekend. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.